you there? Welcome. Welcome. Hello, it's me, Joy. Yes, and I'm live here on YouTube for the very first time live streaming from this wonderful area here, which probably sounds a bit echoey. Um, sorry about that. Right, today I am reading, oh, some Easter stories. Look, he's around the wrong way. Sorry about that, bunny. <laughs> we'll find out a little bit more from him as well. Do the bunny trail. Where my bunny is, because it's Easter, and I really have much to do with Easter anyway. So, which is why I should also be reading from my very well worn, well read Jesus Storybook Bible and um, the Christian meaning of Easter as well. I've also got a little, got a little trick there. Just thought I'd bring it in. It's kind of Eastery. It's going to pop him on there on the side, out of view. And we'll be reading some Julia Donaldson books. Well, a book. Um, it's a coronavirus kind of story that she's written um, using the Gruffalo and the smartest giant in town. And so it's all about washing hands and stuff. So stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be reading a special story, which is, um, uh, is there to help anybody who's having trouble wondering why they can't go out at the moment. And... Um, Oh, right. Switch my switch my alarm off. Um, I don't know why that's going. Oh yeah, I set my alarm to to buy some cakes from a cake shop that I like, <laughs> and I can't do it now because I'm live streaming. So, so anyway, never mind. I'd have to make my own Easter cakes today instead. That's fine. So yes, let's get on with reading these stories. Are you ready? So we're going to start off with a little bunny story. Bears. Oh, it's so cute. Oh. I don't know. He doesn't actually speak like that. This is Mr. Bunny. He's got a more ordinary voice. So today, we're going, just like all the other books, going to be reading with silly faces and silly voices. You can join in too, all right? So do hope you're all right there. So give me a little wave if you are there. And we're going to open it up and let's have a look inside. Now I get a bit closer. Right. Put down my bunny trail sign. Move my chair around a bit. Oh. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Right then, let's get a bit closer. Here we go. It's the day before Easter and Mr. Bunny magically awoke to find all his eggs had disappeared. <gasps> Mr. Bunny searched high and he searched low. But he couldn't find them. He said, oh, well, I must ask my friends to help me find my eggs. Good thinking, Bunny. You can always... Rely on our friends to help us. So, Mr. Bunny asked Mrs. Lamb. There she is. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Lamb, have, have you seen my eggs? Mrs. Lamb replied, Sorry, Mr. Bunny, I haven't seen them. Perhaps Mr. Chick knows where they are. Hmm. Let's turn the page and see if we can see Mr. Chick. So, Mr. Bunny went to find Mr. Chick and asked, Do you know where my eggs are? Mr. Chick said, I haven't seen them, Mr. Bunny, but Mrs. Bunny might have seen them. That's a big voice for something so little and cute. <laughs> so, Mr. Bunny went to find Mrs. Bunny and asked, Oh, Mrs. Bunny, I've lost my eggs. Do you know where they are? She replied, Yes, of course I do, Mr. Bunny. You gave them to me to decorate yesterday. Come with me. <gasps> Forgetful Bunny, Mrs. Bunny said, look, here they are, all decorated for Easter. Oh, uh, thank goodness, said Mr. Bunny. Now I can share them with my friends for our Easter party. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Mr. Bunny was so relieved to have his egg backs, his eggs back. <laughs> Mr. Bunny and his friends enjoyed the eggs at their wonderful Easter party and everyone was happy. Yay! Oh, look at those eggs in the basket. There's some pretty painted ones. Um, have you been painting any eggs? We're going to be doing some today. Well, we're actually going to be painting pebbles <laughs> from the garden. Oh, look, and they've got the bunting up in the garden. It says Happy Easter. And there's all the friends together. What a nice time. Thank you, Mr. Bunny. Let's just put him through there. Oh, look, his ears are stuck. Let's get them out. Thank you, Mr. Bunny, oh, for joining us today. Right, so I said we're also going to read another Easter story. This Easter story is from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And this is by 
Sally Lloyd-Jones and illustrated by Yego or Jago, whose name I probably pronounced wrong and I am a do apologise about that. Now, as you can see, it's completely fallen apart. It's because it's a well-used book. I really like this one. And so, oh, I did have the page saved. <laughs> I don't anymore. Let me just find the page. We're not going to read the whole of the Easter story because it's too long, but we will read parts of it. So I'll just briefly get you up to speed. So this bit is called A Dark Night in the Garden. And there's Jesus. He's praying. He's like, he knows he's going to be, he's, he knows he's going to die. He knows he's going to be crucified. He really doesn't want to do it. But he says, God, whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Because he knew that he was going to be the rescuer. Oh, so there's his friends in the garden with him there. But these are not his friends. They've come to arrest him. And they don't look very friendly there at all, do they? So Jesus was innocent, but he was still taken to be crucified. So here he is after he's been whipped, even though he's done nothing wrong. He's been whipped and now he has to carry his own cross. And everybody's making fun of him. The Roman soldiers are making fun of him and being horrid. And then he was crucified on the cross. Even though he'd never done anything wrong, he was killed because he was taking the punishment of people instead of them. And he died with two other people on that, that day, although they were robbers. And then he was put into a tomb where a big stone was rolled in front to stop people getting in and to stop people getting out as well. They didn't want anything to happen to Jesus because he, they felt he was a troublemaker he was turning the world upside down. What's this? And this is what we're going to read today. It is God's wonderful surprise. Jesus's friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer? The king God promised. It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but whoever said anything about the end? <laughs> Just before sunrise on the third day God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven when the guards saw the angel they fell down with fright and the angel rolled away the huge stone and sat on top of it now here's Mary and some other ladies they've come to um uh, prepare Jesus burial body for burial and what do they see <gasps> dun, dun, dun. A shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Ooh! I said, I'm scared. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it and they screamed anyway. Ah! The angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. <gasps> Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt. And then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they'd woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead, so how could he be alive? And then just then Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. Maybe he'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus' body is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was and he had found her. Mary. Oh, only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought that she was dreaming, but she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. It was Jesus. Mary fell to the ground. Suddenly, tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her whole body. And all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now go and tell the others that I'm alive. So she does that. She runs off. They don't believe her. <laughs> Look, there they are hiding. And Jesus actually comes through the door, not through the door. He comes through the wall and they go, ah, it's a ghost. But he says, no, 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 I'm not a ghost. Look, I'm real. Give me some food. And he eats it. 
right in front of them and you know and they see him eat it they go oh right you're not a ghost and they are absolutely yay because he's alive and um to find out more of that story you will have to um go to, to the jesus storybook bible and find out some more but that is the story that's why we celebrate easter it's so brilliant and yes we do love having eggs and chicks and bunnies and chocolate but we also like to remember the real reason as well now you've been listening very nice thank you for joining me so we are now going to read a story by darren entertainer who is from pontefract in the uk and he has written this brilliant story i think which really deserves some fantastic drawings as well to it so i would sort that out um hopefully this week i will do my own drawings how about that and it's all about the knights of the kingdom, but who are the knights? And it's all about the coronavirus and the time of lockdown that we're in right now. So I'm ready to read it. There's no pictures. You're going to have to use your imagination, but I know you can do that. So are you listening? Here we go. The knights of the kingdom. Once upon a time, a mighty general, maybe we'll call him Boris, and all his advisors had to go to battle with his brave men and women. But these men and women were known as the Knights of the Kingdom. Now these knights didn't carry swords or shields, they carried medicines and they wore blue, green or white uniforms. Do you know who we're talking about? <laughs> they fought with kindness and love against the army of germs that was invading. Of course, He's talking about doctors and nurses and people on the front line who have to be in hospital with really poorly people. The army of germs had a new leader. Bum, bum, bum. He was strong. He was called King Corona. And you've heard of King Corona, haven't you? He was spreading through the kingdom fast, making more and more people very poorly. But his army was so tiny. You couldn't even see them. No, unless you had a very, very powerful magnifying glass. They jumped from person to person until lots of people were now poorly. General Boris, he commanded the people to stay at home and stay away from other people so the germs could not spread and the knights would then have a better chance of winning the battle. Everyone in the kingdom was scared and they stayed at home trying to help General Boris and the knights. Even General Boris was ill at one point. The brave knights of the kingdom fought the germ and King Corona, was, was bat they battled with King Corona day and night. Truck drivers kept working, even though that meant they had to be away from home. And shopkeepers provided army, supplied with everything that they needed. The fight was long and the people were missing their friends and families, their nans and granddads. But they knew that they had to stay away so that King Corona wouldn't get them. Weeks passed and the knights of the kingdom began to start winning. King Corona and his army was getting smaller and smaller and smaller every day until at last they were gone. Poof! <laughs> General Boris had fought with King Corona with all his might and his brave knights never gave up. Everything could go back to normal and everywhere friends and families and nans and granddads were meeting up and giving the best hugs ever. So that's why we have to stay at home right now because General Boris is fighting Corona again and we have to let him and the knights of the kingdom fight the germs. Have you been getting on staying at home? Hmm? I think sometimes it's actually quite fun. Some of the things we can get up to and we can watch YouTube, can't we? And read stories more. <laughs> now, talking of stories, you've heard of Julia Donaldson, haven't you? And she has put together pictures from various books and she's rewritten them and it's all about things like washing your hands at this time and keeping your distance it's all to help us in this time of lockdown now you can go to the graffalo facebook page to see this yourself i'm going to show you on here i don't know if we're going to be able to see it very well because of the reflection but i will do my best so there look can you see it's the witch from the room with on room on the broom and let's see what she's saying she says you'd better be safe you'd better be smart 
stay on the broom, but stay well apart. <laughs> Look, there they are, perched apart on the broom. Very good. Right, let's read the next one. There we go. Can you see it? Have you read that story? It says, Zog and the flying doctors tell the lion with the sneeze, don't sneeze into your paw. Use a paper hanky, please. <laughs> That's right. We don't want to get the germies on our hands, do we? And then pass them to somebody else and sneeze into a hanky. <laughs> Put it in the bin. Oh, do you like the Gruffalo? Because he is next. There he is. Can you see him? What's he doing? Should we see? Should we read it? All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow two metres after. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look, it's the smartest giant. I've done this book as well. There we go. What's he doing? He's washing his hands, isn't he? Let's read it. Look me up and down, I'm the cleanest giant in town. Yeah, nice clean hands, giant. Oh, here's the Gruffalo's child. I've done that book too. Let's have a little look at the picture. Can you see it there? There we go. And it says, the Gruffalo stayed in the Gruffalo's cave. The Gruffalo's child did her best to behave. Well, that's very good of you, Gruffalo child, because it's difficult for everybody in this time, isn't it? Thank you for trying your best. <laughs> oh, look, it's Charlie Cook and his favourite book. There's plenty of time to read books now, isn't it? Should we have a look and see what it says? Charlie Cook has to stay in his house. He reads to the cat and he reads to the mouse. <laughs> you can read to your pets too. I'm sure your parents won't mind if you read to them as well who, or whoever looks after you. Right. Oh, look, here we are. And it's the scarecrow. There we go. It's about his wedding. This scarecrow's wedding can't happen just yet. When everyone's well, a new date will be set. Well, it will be worth waiting for. We feel sorry for them. They had to had to postpone the wedding. But how brilliant it will be when everybody gets together and sees each other again. Right. Oh, look. It's not finished yet. Who are these guys? <laughs> there we are. Do you see them? Let's read it. It says, Granny and Grandpa are all on their own. But they always cheer up when the grandchildren phone. Yay. Are you giving all your relatives a ring or maybe a video call? It's nice, actually. I've spoken to lots more relatives than normal. I know. Uh, so it's been kind of good in that respect. Oh, there we go. It's the highway wrapped. OK, let's see what it says here. Give me your soap and your loo rolls and everything else on the shelf. For I am the rat of the highway and I'm taking them all for myself. <gasps> oh, Basically, kids, anybody who goes in and bulk buys anything and empties the shelves of the stuff that everyone needs is as bad as the highway rat. And I think that they might have an end like he did if they're not careful. It's not nice. We need to be considerate when we shop, don't we? Oh, look, a squash and a squeeze. Have you read my book? A squash and a squeeze when I read it out. I do a very bad Scottish accent. Should we have a look and see what it says here? Stay in your house, said the wise old man. But the chicken's saying, we'll do your shopping. And the pig says, an excellent plan. <laughs> so look, there she is in her house all by herself. But that's good because it's keeping her safe. She doesn't want people coming in and coming out. They might bring her germs. And the animals are going to do the shopping for her. That's kind. Maybe you know somebody who's doing some shopping for somebody else. Oh, look, it's Stickman. There we go. A Stickman there. Should we have a look and see what it says? Stickman and Lady stay home in their tree, but they're still keeping fit with their stick children three. There they are. They're doing some keep fit. What have you been doing to do keep fit, yeah? And what have you been doing? I've been going for runs and also doing stuff at home too. Oh, look, it's Prunella and Pat. Should we see what it says? Prunella and Pat are safe in their flat. Being looked after, 
by Tabby McTat. Oh, look, the cat's looking after them. I bet he's loving it, isn't he? All the pets are loving it at the moment. All the cuddles and the attention they're getting, especially the dogs and the cats, I should think. Oh, that was brilliant. So if you want to actually see those, you can go to the Gruffalo page on Facebook and they've uploaded those there. For that. How absolutely brilliant. Well, I want to say thank you for joining me today. I think I might put these separate books into separate um, uh, videos so you can join me another time and watch those again. Um, and have a lovely day and have a lovely Easter. And I will see you in the next video. See you then, guys. Bye bye. Thank you for joining me. See ya. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Happy Easter. <laughs>